Okay, so the next part of your calculus toolbox is going to be the product rule. The definition of the product rule in your book states that when you take the derivative of the product two functions, you call f of x the first function, and g of x the second function, then it's going to be the first function times the derivative of the second function, plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Uh, add them all together, and you have your derivative. And so, to show how this uh, came about, you take the definition of derivative, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 then is what we used in the past, x plus delta x would be our function uh, subscript here for these two. And so, uh, this is y2, this is y1, and this is x2 minus x1. And we're also going to eliminate this part momentarily. It's there, but we're limited on space here to show what happens next. So whoever designed this proof or this, uh, this rule did something very clever here by inserting something into the numerator so as not to change the value, but to make it uh, something that is factorable to help us get to our, our ends. And that is by adding something to a zero, I'm going to log it in right here such that uh, in order for it to be equal to zero, the two terms have to be opposite yet equal. So it wants to be positive and wants to be negative the same value. And so this is what we end up getting. So like I said, I'm limiting this part for right now. I'll bring it back later. We have f of x plus delta x. Um, times g of x plus delta x. Now this is where the assertion comes in. Minus f of x plus delta x times g of x plus f of x plus delta x times g of x. And you can see here this insertion here, negative and positive the same value to f of zero. That gets wedged in right here. And then we bring this down right here, f of x, g of x. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to fragment this. Oh yeah, also this is all over delta x. Okay, so we're going to fragment this and then factor it out. So I'm going to take this much right here, and I'm going to factor out an f of x plus delta x out of each part. And when I do that, this is going to give me f of x plus delta x time, um, times, and then the, take factor that out for each of these, and you're going to get g of x plus delta x minus g of x. Then over here, that's going to leave us, and I'm going to put this together, uh, half of x plus delta x minus half of x, all with uh, this multiplying by g of x, taking g of x out of both of those, and I get that right there. Okay, so, and this is, now, because this whole thing is going to be all over delta x, uh, I'm just going to put delta x here, and pretend like that has a numerator of 1, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, and pretend that this has um, a 1, and these are multiplying, so this will still give us delta x as our denominator for both. And as you can see, what's going to happen here is that this is the definition of the um, derivative of g of x. Okay? And so what I'm going to get here, and oh, yeah, uh, so I'm going to factor, I'm going to get f of x plus delta x times the derivative of x plus um, f prime of x 
times g of x by definition. Well, the, the deal here is now I'm, gonna, uh, now I'm gonna bring in the limit as delta x approaches zero. And as that happens, if that when that becomes the case, then that means then under these conditions that f of x plus delta x becomes f of x at infinitesimal differences, which is what we're looking at. So that's going to change this to f of x times g of x prime plus, and I'm going to switch the order here, g of x times f prime of x. And that is your definition of the product of the product rule, which is what we explained in the very beginning. So now we're going to get into the use of it. Uh, so we're going to go to page 126. And we're going to have um, uh, in this problem number one, g of x, which is no longer part of the, the designation we use in the definition. So g of x is equal to x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 2x. So this is the problem in your book for number 1. And we're going to use the rule. And we're going to call that the first function. That's the second function. So g prime of x is going to be x squared plus 1 times the derivative of this. So the derivative of this is going to be 2x minus 2. Plus, then we put the second derivative first, x squared, or the second function rather first, and then take the derivative of the first function, which is just 2x. Now we'll multiply these out. And what we get here for this one, we foil this thing out, we have 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 2x minus 2. So that's the first half of that, plus 2x cubed minus 4x squared. So now we just combine like terms, and we should end up with what well, 2x cubed, 2x cubed, 4x cubed. Uh, we don't, uh, negative 2x squared, negative 4x squared, negative 6x squared. And then there's nothing to combine with these two, 2x two and minus 2. And there is your derivative of g of x. Number three. The problem here is they say h of t is equal to the cube root of t times t squared plus 4. Now this is one of those situations where we're going to need to rewrite that in um, exponential form. So this is going to be equal to t to the one third power times t squared plus 4. Now we're ready to use the product rule of h prime of t is going to be equal to, so we have t to the one third times, and this is going to be 2t, remember that, and that can drop out because that's a a constant, plus, and then we put t squared plus 4, and we're going to multiply that by the derivative of this. Well, we'll take the one third down here, and then we're going to subtract one, one third minus one, which is one third minus three thirds, is a negative two thirds. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together. This Now when you multiply the same bases, but you add up their exponents, this is 1, which is 3 thirds, so this becomes 2 to the 2t, sorry, 2t to the 4 thirds power. Let's get rid of that dot. 
doing t to the fourth third power plus, and now I'm distributing this across both of these, and that's going to give us uh, one third. This one is one third, and then we add these together. That's six thirds, that's going to be two thirds, and then so that's going to give us t to the fourth third power plus, and then four times one third is four thirds, t to the negative two thirds power. This is what we call an unholy mess. So we combine what we can. Well, it's nice that we have the same exponent here. So that means that these will just add up uh, as 2 and 1 third, which is 7 thirds. So this is 7 thirds times t to the 4 thirds power plus, and this is 4 thirds. And then this is going to be a denominator of t to the 2 thirds power. So I'll put this over t to the 2 thirds. And that's about as good as it's going to get, so we're going to leave it in that form right there. Okay? That's a little ugly, but, you know, the idea is still basically the same. We take the first times the root of the second, the second times the root of the first, combine like terms, and uh, put a little makeup on it, make it look not so ugly. Uh, they especially don't like negative exponents. So when I say they, you're, you're a textbook author, so you try to accommodate them for that. Number five. We have f of x equals x cubed times the cosine of x. Okay, so excuse me, f prime of x is equal to the x cubed times the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. And then we take the uh, cosine of x and multiply by the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And so we multiply these together and we get negative x cubed sine x. And we put the 3x squared in front here, plus 3x squared cosine x. And that's really all we can do with that. So that's all there is to that. So your assignment for this is going to be page 126, problems um, 2, 4, and 6. Now the next one we're going to talk about is function of functions. And then there's a little bit of a number of problems that we will draw both of them at the same time. So uh, we'll talk about the quotient of uh, functions and then we will uh, deal with the combination in the next lecture. Okay? Good luck.